This thing keeps happening every single time I listen to one of my favorite songs of the last five years or so. I hear this weird but familiar drum sound that just cuts right through the track. I love it. Here it is one more time. That punchy, unnatural drum was the sound of the 80s, and it's back. It's called gated reverb, and like many of the greatest inventions, it was discovered by accident. In the 1970s, drums on the radio sounded a lot like this. They're quite dry, aren't they? They're just as recorded. To achieve that isolated, clean sound, producers and engineers mic'd the drums all over, including the inside. This was the sound of bands like Pink Floyd, Earth, Wind & Fire, and Genesis. At least up until 1979, that's when Peter Gabriel was recording his third solo album. His Genesis bandmate Phil Collins was on the drums playing a simple beat. And here's where something magical happened. So according to their engineer, Hugh Padgham, they had a brand new recording console with some cool features that included a mic hanging in the studio to talk to the band. That mic accidentally picked up Phil's drums and the result was this thick, punchy reverb that disappeared in an instant. The reason? Well, the mic had a heavy compressor on it, which reduces the volume of loud sounds and amplifies quiet ones. It sort of crunches a waveform. And the console had a noise gate, which only lets amplitudes above a certain threshold pass through. And then it immediately shuts off. The result was such a crazy sound that Peter Gabriel wrote his album opener, Intruder, around it. Now, if you don't know Intruder, you'll certainly recognize this, made by Phil Collins and Hugh Padgham a year later. Thanks to a happy accident, the sound of the 80s was born. The drums on In the Air Tonight were recorded in Townhouse's legendary stone room. Its reverb came from the walls of the studio. It was meant to sound like a castle, but not everybody who wanted good reverb had access to that type of space. In the 80s, once the digital technology came to the fore, not only was the sound of our music changing, but the things that augment our sounds were changing also. Nothing illustrates this more than the evolution of reverb. So reverb was achieved in the early days um, the most natural way of all, which is to have an echo chamber. So what you would do in this chamber is you would set up in one corner of the room a big loudspeaker. And in the other corner of the room, you'd set up a microphone. Here's an echo chamber at Abbey Road Studios. Echo chambers took up real estate, and real estate was expensive, so plate reverb was invented. It'd be a big box with an aluminum plate in it, and the voice would go in one side, travel along the aluminum plate, and come out the other side with a little bit of reverberation on it. Plate reverb boxes were 600 pounds or more. Not great for portability. Enter the AMS RMX-16 a shoebox-sized unit that created reverb via circuit boards and algorithms. Right there in a box, we had plate reverbs and underground garages and big concert halls and small and large echo chambers and music clubs. The AMS, which debuted in 1982, was the first reverb unit to be driven by a microprocessor, and it had room for 99 presets, including a few that created that unnatural gated sound with a push of a button. I think a big example was the work that I did with Prince in the 80s. He loved that gated reverb. Uh, yes, that Prince. Prince used a Lin LM1 drum machine that sampled real drum sounds. Susan fed that Lin LM1 to the AMS reverb box and used a preset called non-linear. Now, non-linear reverb just can't be replicated in the real world without technology. Reverb in a natural setting tends to fade as the audio signal decays. Nonlinear reverb 
it actually gets louder. It makes a drum sound like a whip. Picture it like a tidal wave, a huge wave suddenly stopping and hitting a brick wall. That's the sound of gated reverb. That was the classic, quintessential example. That was the big one. That was the fat one. A year after In the Air Tonight, those huge drums were no longer an accident. The sound was just built into the reverb technology. Then for a decade, gated reverb was just a sound you couldn't escape on the radio. In the trees. It's coming. When I was a child, running in the dark. So let it rock. Let it roll. We really kind of used it to death, and by the next album, by Sign of the Times, I was pretty sick of it. It seemed everybody else was too. When the 90s rolled around, musicians tended to favor those dry drums again. But here's the thing. After about a 20-year hiatus, it's back. Here's Ariel Rexshade on Song Exploder. He produced Carly Rae Jepsen's latest album. That drum fill is just something that I've always kind of had in my head. They were inspired by the drum fill in uh, Jack and Diane by John Cougar Mellencamp. Jack Antonoff of Bleachers was born the year Prince released Purple Rain, and here he is in a studio playing that Lynn LM1 drum machine. He produced Lord's latest album, which has gated reverb drums. In your car, the radio up. In your car, the radio up. And Taylor Swift's aptly titled 1989. It's 2 a.m. In your car. The thing is, producers today don't need Prince's drum machine or a physical rack of reverb units to get that 80s sound. You can go online and download massive Prince and Phil Collins inspired gated reverb drum sample packs. And that AMS RMX 16. It's now a computer plugin. Sure, gated reverb drums aren't a timeless sound. They bring you back to the 80s, but that doesn't mean they don't sound cool. This episode of Earworm is brought to you by Audible. If you go to audible.com, there are so many amazing books about music, but there's one that I definitely want to recommend, and that's Listen to This by Alex Ross. Alex Ross is a longtime music critic at The New Yorker, and he's written some of my favorite books about music. Uh, if you want to understand music more or appreciate it better, listen to this definitely has you covered. So if you go to audible.com slash Vox, you can download a 30 day free trial, download, listen to this for free. And if you choose not to keep the service, you can still keep the book. One other thing is I made a Spotify playlist for you. The link is in the description. It's called an ode to gated reverb. And it has some of my favorite songs with gated reverb from the 1980s and today.